Okay, let's return again to our original data set. Now for the original data set, we can compute the deviance as we just defined the deviance, right? So the mean expenditure, if you take the mean of all of these values, the average of all of these values is 591.75. And we can compute the deviance by taking each of the terms individually, 765 minus 591.75 the whole squared, plus 600 minus 591.75 the whole squared, and so on and so on up to 450 minus 591.75 the whole squared. Okay, so that is the sum of the squared deviations for each of the values, uh, for the total, for all the values. And that value turns out to be uh, 478,514 approximately. Okay, so that's the overall deviance currently. Now what we are trying to do is, let's say we split the data into two sets by using some rule. Then what we want to do is to take the deviance of each of the two sets, add them up, and we want the total deviance, the resulting total deviance, to be much less than 478,514. Really, that's what we are trying to do. Okay, so here is our complete data set. And what we have done is we've taken each of the points and mapped them here. So for example, we've got a point, uh, let's say this one has an income of slightly less than 60,000, let's say uh, 57,000, and the number of uh, family members, the family size is two. So that's here and its uh, expenditure is 350, right? So we've got the income on the x-axis, family size on the y-axis, and the actual expenditure shown on, uh, on the plot itself, okay? So this is convenient because we've got only two dimensions, two predictors and one target, so we are able to show it like this, okay? So for here, for example, you can see that there are two values which are pretty close to each other, so both are 525. I don't know what the other one is. This is masking that. So here also you see that. So that's how you interpret this. And of course, there are some values which are overlapping. So for example, at 765 and whatever this income is and the family size is, uh, there are actually multiple points sitting underneath there. Okay, just to, so the total of the points that you're seeing here will not be 20 because some of them are hidden. So as we already know, the total deviance for this set of all the points is 478,514. Now suppose we choose to split at an income of 97,500. Now why we choose to split it there, we'll see later because we are not going to do the splitting. Uh, the classification, the, the regression tree method, R is going to do the splitting for us, but we just want to understand what's going on here, right? So R says that the first split should occur here at an income of 97,500. So what happens is when you split it there, you create two sets of cases and you can compute the, this is the income 94,950, which is 95,000. And you've got two cases here. And if you compute the deviance for each of them separately, you get the deviance for this is 79,567. And the deviance for the cases that fall here is 46,321. Okay, so the deviance reduction is obviously from 478,514 for the total to now the sum of these two, which is uh, 125,888, which is just the sum of these two numbers, right? So we had one set of 20 cases which had a total deviance of about 478,000. We now broke it up into two sets. Together, they have a deviance of only 125,888, which means that the cases inside each of these sets are much more homogeneous than was the overall set, right? So we managed to introduce some homogeneity. And of course, we applied just one single rule, the cases that satisfy the rule of income less than 94,950 and income greater than 94,950. That's it. Those are the two sets, okay? So we got some degree of uh, homogeneity. Now, suppose we were to say, okay, that's my tree, just the root node and one single rule, cases that satisfy the rule and cases that sat don't satisfy the rule, just two, two results. In that case, our prediction would be that for any case for which the income is less than 94,950, we would say the income, the expenditure is going to be the average of these values. And for greater than 94,950, we'll say the, the expenditure is going to be the average of these values. Okay, and that'll still be better than predicting that the expenditure for the for anyone would be the overall average. Okay, 
So that's what we are doing. Of course, we are not going to stop here. We are going to split it further into more nodes. Okay. So let's say that we find that the next split is here, which is for income uh, for families income less than ninety four thousand nine fifty, and family size equal to one or two, right? So that is one set. That is we are splitting the node which we got as a result of income less than ninety four thousand nine fifty. Okay, uh, this is again like what we did with classification trees. Okay, so it's now split into this. What was on the left hand side is now split into two nodes based on the family size less than two or greater than two, less than two point five or greater than two point five. Okay, so now of course the deviance is reduced further. This deviance remains at forty six thousand three twenty one like before. Now here we have a deviance on the top of sixteen thousand seventy one and bottom of 17,400. Now, if you remember, the overall left-hand side deviance was about 79,000 earlier. We have reduced that now to about 16,000 plus 17,000. It's about 33,000. Okay, so now you can see the total deviance is, uh, earlier the deviance with the two partitions was 125,888. We have now reduced that to about, uh, you know, uh, 46,000 plus 16,000 plus 17,000 to about 79,000. Okay, so we started with 470,000, we got it down to 125,888, we now further got it down to 79,792 as a result of two splits. Okay, now again we go and we split this, what was on the right hand side with this, this part, which had a deviance of 46,321, we split that into two parts once again, and here the split occurred at income of 113,500. And we now look at the deviances. And the deviances look like this. Once again, we can now see that the deviance reduction was from 79,000 to 53,000, which is just the sum of all of these. Okay, so what we are doing is every time we split, we are creating sets of cases which are much more homogeneous than before. Okay, and then we go on and create one more split here. This is at family size of 3.5. And the deviance has now come down from 53,000 to 41,000. And we continue again. Here there is a split at family size 3.5, but this time income is greater than uh, 113,000, whatever it was in the earlier slide. And the deviance is now reduced from 41,000 to 27,000. Okay, so this is the process that goes on. And of course, each of these splits is determined by R. That is, R is going to try all the possible splits and choose the one that gives the maximum reduction in deviance. Right, so if we go back to the first place, Okay, this is the overall set that we have. The deviance is 40, 478,000. Okay, so now here you have a whole range of possible splits you can do with income and another whole range of possible splits you can do at family size. Right, splitting at income basically means drawing vertical lines. And splitting for family size basically means drawing horizontal lines. Right, so what R does is it considers every possible split on the vertical uh, every possible vertical line and every possible horizontal line and calculates the resulting deviance for each of those lines and it chooses the line that produces the maximum reduction in deviation and that line happens to be this. Right? Once again, it considers all the possible splits on this part, all the possible splits on this part and chooses the one that gives the maximum deviance reduction and that happens to be this okay so this is the line that produced and so on and so on so at every stage what it did was it considered all the possible splits on all the possible sets and chose the split that gave us the maximum reduction in deviance so that's the way it works and of course branching depends upon attribute type if your attribute is numeric then the split is magnitude based which is height less than 25 salary less than 35 income less than 94950 etc but if your attribute is categorical 
then the split is basically based on equality, right? Color is red and color is green, uh, green or blue, red or green, etc. Okay, so it's equality based if the attribute is categorical. The nice thing about the tree method is that it can handle both numeric and categorical predictors without any problem. So suppose you carry through this process until the end. This is a different data set, but you might get a tree that looks like this. And this is obviously very complicated, right? So what could be happening here is that we might be overfitting in the sense that we are building a tree that is too tailored to the training data set, right? So you've got a training data set and you've created so many rules to match every nuance of the training data set. And what might happen there is that your training data set may have some crazy non-representative data and you will try to find a rule for even stuff that is not really representative of reality, right? Because any large data set is going to have some aberrations. And if you build a tree that's really large, you will try to identify rules even for those aberrations, which is not a great idea, right? So this is called overfitting. And we've already seen this with uh, classification trees, okay? So the general theory looks like this, right? So you've got your error rate and you've got the number of splits, right? The number of splits, obviously, as the number of splits increases, your tree is becoming bigger and bigger. And as you create bigger and bigger trees, your error rate on the training data will keep on reducing, right? Because every time you create a new rule, you're reducing the deviance, as you already saw. You're reducing the deviance and therefore your number of error, error rate or your uh, overall deviance is going to keep on reducing. But what will happen with unseen data, which is your test data or real life data with which you're going to, on which you're going to apply this model in the future, what will happen is that the number of the error rate or the deviance will keep on reducing up to a point and beyond a point, the deviance will start increasing because at that point, the new rules that we created were all handling aberrations in our training data, right? So what we ideally want is a tree, which is this size. This is the optimal size of the tree that we want, okay? Uh, because uh, that tree gives us the maximum reduction in the error rate on unseen data. So that's what we are looking at. So let's look at what we are doing here. So for this particular problem, you can have trees of different sizes. You can have a tree with just one leaf node that says for any new case, the predicted value is simply the average of the expenditure for the entire data set, right? We have a data set with 20 cases. So we are saying that for any new case, I'm just going to predict the average value of expenditure as the expenditure for this particular case, okay? So that's a very simple, trivial sort of model when we say, well, if I don't know anything, I'm just going to say my prediction is the average. So for example, if I have a class full of uh, children and their average height is, let's say, five feet, three inches, and uh, we are going to have a new child who comes along whose height you don't want to know, you don't know, and you simply say, well, I predict it as five feet, three inches because that's the average, right? That's a really trivial, simple, simplistic kind of a model. Okay, now you could do slightly better by having a tree with two leaves, right? So in this case, we have one rule, income less than 95,000 or 94,950, and income uh, greater than or equal to 94,950, okay? So now our predictions will be a little more nuanced. We'll say, well, if the income is less than 94,950, my prediction is 483. If the income is greater than 94,950, greater than or equal to, my prediction is 754, okay? So there's a little more nuance in the prediction, and clearly the errors we make will be much less here than here. We can go on like this. Suppose we want to consider a tree with three leaves. It's got a little more uh, nuance, right? So here we'll say, uh, if income is less than 94,950, family size is less than 2.5, which is family size one or two, then my prediction is 410. If the family size is, income is less than 94,950, and family size is greater than 2.5, which is three or more, then my prediction is 536. Otherwise, if the income is greater than 95, uh, 94,950, my prediction remains as 754, okay? So what we did was we took this node and broke it up further. So now 
our deviance will be even lower. Our predictions will be slightly more accurate and so on. This is the tree with four leaf nodes and this is the tree with five leaf nodes and here is a tree with six leaf nodes and finally here you have a tree with seven leaf nodes. Right. So every time what we are doing is we are, we are improving the deviance or reducing the deviance on the training data. Of course as we already saw it is possible that at some point the deviance on the uh, test data may start going up, right? So seven, uh, and here we have a tree with eight leaf nodes. So we have looked at trees with one leaf node, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. At some point in the middle lies our optimal tree, the tree that will give the best performance on data that we have not seen. So our problem now is to try and determine that optimal thing. So here's a tree with nine leaf nodes. And finally, here is a tree with 10 leaf nodes. Okay, so we've got here number of splits is going from, uh, you know, zero, which is no splits at all, one leaf node to nine splits, 10 leaf nodes, right? So that's what this looks like. And the error rate keeps on reducing on the training data. But we, as we've already seen, the error rate will reduce up to a point on the training data and start increasing, right? So clearly, we want to find out which is, what is the number of splits that leads to this point here, right? So out of the trees we have with one leaf node up to nine leaf nodes, somewhere in between lies our best tree in terms of performance on unseen data, right? So we want to find out that point. What is our optimal tree? 